Okay, good. All right, that's perfectly fine. So you basically now used algebra to solve this equation, cross multiplying and simplifying. Let's look at this a little bit more intuitively. What's the big lesson of this? The big lesson is that the ratio of the distances is the same as the ratio of the heights. Well, how much further is, this di is the top distance than the bottom distance? What's the ratio of the distances? It's two times. Yeah, the image distance is, uh, so the image is twice as far as the object. So it should have twice the height. Since the image is twice as far as the object, it should have twice the height. And that lets us go straight to the idea that the height is 0.16 meters. Here you can just solve by algebra, but for setting this up in the first place, it helps to have that basic intuition. So the basic thing we're seeing here is what you might not have expected is that the image distances have the same ratio as the heights. If the image is twice as far as the object, then the image height is twice as big as the object height. Again, we're not worried about the signs right now. We're just focusing on magnitudes. So I put in the dots for just magnitudes. Let's see. Well, where are we in here? Now, um, this, uh, the question was kind of ambiguous. They didn't say whether they wanted the magnitude of the height yeah. or just the sine height uh, as well. But where are we in our table? We have a converging device, um, and it's magnified. So we don't really know whether we're in this region or this region over here. So I don't think we have enough information to tell whether it's inverted or upright. I don't think we really have enough information to tell whether this is inverted or upright right now. So it looks like the question was just asking for the magnitude of the height this case. So uh, as usual, things really clarify if we try to use the table, but it takes some practice. So in this case, we know that, uh, well, they told us that it was, uh, yeah, they told us that the image distance is greater than the object distance, so we know it's magnified. But that means we could be in either of these two regions there, so we can't really tell whether it's inverted or upright. Again, that saves us a lot of work. Otherwise, we'd have to figure that out by algebra, so it's nice to be able to look at the table. Okay. All right, so let's say we have this object and this image. Uh, it's an image that my picture is getting a little messy, but the image is kind of right over here where these two outgoing light rays converge. Now, um, one thing to notice is that we kind of have a, a right triangle here. We get this right triangle here. Um, what, what's our name for the vertical side of this right triangle on the object side. What's the name for this distance? Of the um, object distance? This one here? Are you saying this is S? Yeah. Now right. what would That's, be? I mean the object distance, object height. That's right. So the symbol would be? H. OK. So this vertical side of the triangle has a distance of H. And how about this horizontal side? Alright, now this little triangle here is harder to see because it's a shrunken image, but here's the image triangle. We can make this little image triangle here. And uh, how long is this little horizontal side? H prime. 
horizontal uh, side? Sorry, sorry, S prime. Which one? S, uh, S prime. Yeah, remember that S measures the distance from the lens and H measures the distance from the principal axis. S measures the distance from the lens and H is from the principal axis. But we almost always draw the principal axis horizontally. So then H is the height and S is the horizontal. So H does not stand for horizontal, it stands for height. And what would this vertical distance be? H prime. Okay, well, doesn't it look like these little triangles here are similar triangles? They both have the same angles. Well, that's why the ratio of their sides they must have the same ratio of their sides. So I'm just starting to get a little more intuition for this fact, because if we have intuition for it, it's easier to retrieve it when we need it during the test. It kind of makes sense. So uh, before, we just kind of presented it as, as a mysterious fact that one dis the ratio of one distance was the same as the ratio of the other distance. But the reason why you would expect this is because the S's are the, hor are the horizontal sides of the triangles, and the H's are the vertical sides of the triangles. And the object triangle and the um, image triangle are both similar to each other. So whatever the ratio of their horizontal sides is, we would expect that to be the same as the ratio of their vertical sides. And if, if we understand that, intu that intuition, maybe it's easier to think of this when we need it. Uh, again, I should really put in dots here, because this is just for magnitudes. We're not worried about the signs here. Okay, so, uh, because obviously now we're doing geometry, so we're just focusing on the magnitudes here, uh, the lengths. Um, and also, you can clearly see here, then, that when the image distance is small, the height is small, because they're part of the same triangle. If, if you have a smaller horizontal side than this triangle, you have to have a smaller vertical side than this triangle. Okay, and clearly if, they, if, you have the, if the image has a greater horizontal side, it would have a greater vertical side. All right, so that gives us a little more intuition for this. And of course, it's just common sense that this is the magnification. This is just the definition of magnification. How much bigger is the image height than the other height? And then the formula that we've learned, again, I'm just focusing on magnitudes. The interesting thing is, this is the thing that was not obvious. The thing that's not obvious is the magnification is also the ratio of the distances, of the uh, horizontal distances here. This is just a matter of definition, that this is what magnification means. But now we saw with our triangle argument that this is also the ratio of the distances here, as far as the magnitudes are concerned. Okay, so when we look at this problem, what did the problem tell us? It told us the image distance and the object distance and the image size. So that's the, what we have to think about making it, thinking about these uh, similar triangles. They have the same lengths. Okay. Notice how it would be easy to waste time trying to puzzle out the focal length here, yeah. which we didn't need. So we never needed the lens mirror equation here. We never used this equation in this case. Uh, and again, the clue, how, how do you know what equation to use? Well, this is a problem that's dealing with dis, uh, image distances and heights. Well, if you're dealing with heights, you want to focus more on magnification, which is what we're doing over here. So not every problem gets solved with this same equation. 